Okay, not an issue. So we are good to go, guys. So let me first of all talk about the SAP landscape. How SAP works. How SAP works inside the SAP family. We are going to talk about that. As we know that, guys, SAP is popular because of its ERP system or ERP application. So the main thing what we have under SAP family is my ERP. So this ERP system is there in the market. We want a proper solution to read out these sources present inside this ERP system. This is OLTP system. And this ERP system is capable of read out the data from all department of business. Well, for reading out the tables or the data coming from this OLTP system, we have our business warehouse application under my SAP landscape. We know that we are uh, SAP AG is popular because of ERP and all the ERP information like all the data coming into this OLTP system will be easily read out by the SAP BW which was previously known as SAP BI. So the next tool offered or next application offered inside my SAP landscape is SAP BW which actually been designed or developed to make things easy to read out from the ERP system. So SAP BW always work on top of the SAP ERP. Not only this, it has a lot of other sources. When we are talking about SAP landscape, we have to stick with SAP family tools and SAP family applications. Well guys, SAP BW has certain extractors which allows us to extract different different financial data and my logistical data from the ARP system very easily for developing end-to-end -end data warehouse. Well, this application or this module is named as end-to-end -end data warehousing application in SAP family. As we know that when we have to design a data warehouse, there is an association of three different applications uh, in a business side. We do modeling. We do ETL. And we do reporting. But by combining all these three, we will have a data warehouse design flow completed. Well guys, when we are looking on to the SAP BW, we are experiencing one thing that it has lagging on to the reporting end. We have end-to-end -end data warehousing application or data warehousing flow where SAP BW is good on to the modeling part, it is good on ETL part, but when we coming on to the reporting part, it is not that much stronger on reporting end. Like designing of query, my uh, report development and analysis. BW is not powerful on this. As we know that BW is one of the major product inside uh, SAP uh, AG. BW is the only product uh, you can say as of now is giving more revenue to SAP. Well, before introducing about the business object, SAP BW was more in picture from SAP end. So as this tool is uh, having you know a great position in SAP family, always SAP try to focus more on the BW application. So they wanted to strengthen this tool so that customer of BW is going to be increased. As we know that if we have any lag in the application definitely the customers are not going to be increased. If we do the solution, our existing customers are also going to be 
happy or satisfied with the application. Well, as I mentioned, reporting part is not that much powerful inside the BW. Well, SAP was trying to strengthen this part by developing the same application or by acquiring another application from uh, outside world. Well, m doing a modification inside the BW is quite complex and it will take a huge amount of you know revenue or expenditure. So as a result, what SAP started, they started searching for a good BA solution in the market. And what they found is business option. Before acquiring business object, business object was already popular in the market. Well, when it was already popular in the market, what SAP has did in the year 2007, they started uh, processing for acquisition of SAP uh, my business object, which currently called as SAP business object. In the year 2008, SAP AG acquired business object and then named it as SAP business object. In the same year, they have released a new version of business object, which was 3.1 XIR3. 3.1 XIR3 was the version in 2008, which is released by SAP as SAP business object. Well, guys, as we know that business object is an analytical tool which offers us <coughs> BI platform for querying, designing of my uh, sources, my reports de development, and my analytical needs. Well, that is going to strengthen my SAP BW as well. So what I can do is, I can offer to the customer, those who are using SAP BW, that you can have a better BI platform at your end <coughs> by implementing business options. Well, also our new customers are going to use business object and BW together. So what we can see under the business object, that business object is always going to connect with BW. So the connection inside the BW to BO is more prominent now with the version 4.0. What SAP has did, they have released a new connection by which my integration of these two applications has been uh, went in a single click. That means the complexity of integration between these two applications has been reduced. As a result, we can have our query designed under the SAP BW under my BOBI for report development by a single click. So SAP business object is working on top of BW as well, where the major source of my B, uh, BO, uh, which we call as a business object or Bob J previously, is universal. Well, this universe is nothing, but it's a simplified structure or structure between database layer to the user layer and that layer is called as semantic layer. Universe is nothing but it's a semantic layer which is designed to provide a solution or to reduce the complexity of database layer. Where we know that guys we have database layer where each and everything has been specified in tabular view. We have everything in column and data in rows. But when you look into the database structure, we'll find out there is a complex part. The name of the database columns in the table and the field-wise concept is quite uh, unfamiliar for non-technical guys. Let me take you to one small PPD which will guide you what exactly the semantic layer stands for. It's a small presentation. We'll go through with this. Uh, especially, we know that when SAP introduces business object in its family, 
their focus is to catch up the end users, power users for ad hoc reporting, especially for the ad hoc reporting. When end users are coming into the picture, they are going to do the development at their end by their own. So as a result, they are start looking into the database and what they found is the database structure is complex. When you look into this table, which is, uh, which is showing up, the store underscore db table, where we have store cd, which is a store code, store name, and revenue net generated, and the date of uh, this revenue generation. Well, guys, if you look into the database structure, always uh, database people will reduce the uh, spaces uh, used for specifying the column name to give more space for you know um, storing more record at the database layer. Well, due to that, some coding of the column will restrict us to understand the column name or to understand the field which is present inside the table. So sometimes if we are not technical, we are not able to understand what exactly is showing in there in this table. I may can say str underscore cd could be anything. Even that I can see it's sometimes of code, but I don't know what type of code is this. I can see str underscore name is some type of name showing up, but I couldn't predict over here confidently if I'm a, not a technical person, if I'm not aware about the database structure, I can't predict it that it's a store, uh, store name. Well, guys, at this complex side, what happened? End users coming onto the uh, uh, onto the this side to look into the database of their business. When they looked into it, they find it complex to understand. When they are not able to understand the table itself, how do they will design the query? If they are not able to design the query, definitely they are not able to have a report and they can't perform analysis. So as a result, what happened? They moved out. They moved out due to this complexity. And they were start looking for the solution of this complex part. So as a result, what business object has offered them a solution called semantic layer, a layer between my database layer to my customer layer, or you can say my user layer or client layer. So basically, between those two layers, we have defined one layer, which is going to simplify the structure of my database, as well as it is going to give a common name to the field. So what we did over here is instead of calling it str underscore cd, we define the name of the column or this particular field with the common name in this world, like store code, store name, sales revenue, and date. So first thing what we have to do it at the semantic layer side is we have to provide a solution of names specified into the database table to the field. We give a common name of those fields called day by day in this world. So by that, any Jack and Jill will understand the column which is specified at the semantic layers. Not only this, guys, we are also going to specify the different structure which allows us to differentiate the columns and type of data in the, in the table. Well, what I'm talking about is we have store code, we have a store name, we have a sales revenue, we have a date. Well, if you look at here, store code, store name, date is, is nothing but my dimensions, where sales revenue is my numerical picture. So anyhow, to differentiate the dimensional data and numerical picture, we have a different structure in business object. We have our own structure in business object. 
which is commonly called as classes and objects. We have a different structure, guys, and we call it classes and objects. So classes, classes is nothing but a folder which collects a similar types of objects, where objects are nothing but the columns which holding up the rows of data. So instead of calling it a column, we make it an object and we'll categorize also what type of object is this. So inside the business object structure, we have three different types of objects. One is dimensional object, which relates to dimensional data. Another type of object is detail, which is an attribute of the dimension. And the third type of object is my measure, which actually uh, nothing but numerical picture like sales revenue, salary, price, etc. So these are the categories of object which is going to be defined at the semantic layer side. So look at here guys, you may can say like who is going to be responsible for designing of the semantic layer. So the designer will be the person who is going to design the semantic layer. So why designer? Designer will be the person who is well known about the database structure. So he can read out those fields name and he can understand those fields so that what she's going to give us, it's not about the C and he guys, but we have taken two different identity he and C to differentiate the end user to the designer. Designer will be the person who is going to design my semantic layer, a solution provided on top of my database layer. Well, she's going to define the fields name with the generalized or common name used in this world. The next thing what she's going to do is she's going to categorize these columns as per their specification. Like if it is a dimension type of data, it will be defined as dimensional object. If it is a major type of data, means if it is a numerical picture, it will be defined as a major object. Like those people, those who have worked on BI, SAP BW, they might be known about this. We have a categorization in BW called as characteristic and key figure. So dimensional object is nothing but a characteristic and sales revenue is nothing but a key figure. So the key figure which actually gives us a numerical picture of my business. Okay. So there will be the categorization of my objects based at the semantic layer side on top of my database layer. Then what I'm going to do is we are going to publish the semantic layer to the BI platform. Once it is published, it will become universe. So universe is nothing but a semantic layer published under the BI platform, which is nothing but my repository of my business object. Fine guys, so now the end user will come in the picture, the power user will come in the picture and they'll start looking onto the universe instead of the database structure. Now what he is able to find out is pretty easy to understand the table structure or the structure present inside the universe. So as he is able to understand the structure present inside the universe, he will start designing the query. So he will design the query onto the query front and then those query will be returned by the data by running the query and it will fetch the data from the original table present at the database table. If you can see store code, the dimensional object, fetching a data from str underscore cd from the store db table uh, to str underscore cd column. Well, guys, this is how it works. We will have well connectivity to database layer to semantic layer so that when it is published, we will not have any issue. It will fetch data directly from the database layer. Fine. So that is how things are going under the universe. So universe is a major source under my business object for reporting purpose. We do our, we simplify my database layer by using semantic layer and when we publish it become universe. So universe is a prime source as I'm mentioning. 
we have another source. We know that that SAP Business Object Business Intelligence 4.0 is here to support BW as well. So we have another instance inside the BI tool offered inside the Business Object Business Intelligence as BW as a source. One is my universe as a source. We have another source called BW, where BW as a source will work as the query designed under BW platform, which has actually been designed under BAX platform. The platform where we do designing of query under BW will be known as BAX, BAX Query Designer. So this BAX actually has been taken inside the BOBI as one of the sources or prime sources for reporting as BO is more onto the support of BW. We can also use the BOBI as an independent analytical tool in a business side. Well, as we are going to strengthen this, BW is always working uh, correlatively with both applications. Going forward into the SAP landscape, we know that guys, recently we have uh, developed, means SAP has developed uh, in-memory system or um, high-level performance uh, in-memory system which is known as HANA. HANA is more popular because of its in-memory processing where HANA has mainly popularity because of a database but it also has modeling platform well guys when it has modeling platform we know that for data warehousing project we have to deal with modeling ETL and reporting so at this stage when HANA doesn't have ETL functionality and reporting functionality it has only a modeling functionality and it also can have work as a database. So we, we can have a source, we can build a model on top of that, but we can do reporting on top of it and we can do my ETL work under it. So as a result, for support of HANA also, my business object, business intelligence is working. So we have well connected with, with HANA as a source. We even take the HANA model inside my BOBI and we can later on design the query on top of it. We can later on develop the report on top of it and we can perform analysis on top of HANA database data into the business object, business intelligence for that. Especially guys, there is another tool for ETL purpose from SAP AG side. When SAP acquired the business object, they have also acquired one of another tool which giving them EIM solution which stands for Enterprise Information Management. Uh, that is nothing but ETL function tool. Well that tool was known as a business object data integrator. When SAP uh, acquired it, uh, they renamed it with a new naming convention saying that SAP business object data services. Well, this data services tool is capable of delivering data integration and data quality both in a single environment. So this SAP tool, this SAP application also is going to support my HANA for ETL functionality to take data from SAP BW or to take data directly from ECC to the HANA. As SAP is looking onto the prospective to replace SAP BW in coming decades, it's not going to happen immediately, but in future maybe they are planning to dissolve SAP BW support and they wanted to strengthen more HANA because HANA is now in popularity and it's better and easier than SAP BW. Well guys, if we have direct communication established between HANA uh, to ECC through BODS, 
we will be able to give or provide a solution to the customer end by using HANA implementation, right? So I have a communication uh, between my SAP BW to HANA, and also I have a communication established between HANA to <coughs> to the ERP of SAP. Well, guys, at the place of SAP, it's SAP BODS. Again, it's going to focus more on BW side. As a result, we will find this EIM tool has two of the instances specially given for BW. BW as a source and BW as a target. We have two instances or we can say we have two data stores or where we have a two types of connectivity to the BW one as a source, one as a target has been given inside the BODS. So as uh, by looking onto this connection, you can understand how important BW is, where SAP has uh, given a more focus on that. So that we can take SAP BW as a source and we can make SAP BW as a target. Both is possible by using BODS um, tool. Well, guys, I can make any any database or any uh, application as a source or target but here we have two instances one for input one for output so especially it's been giving more emphasis on to the BW side also going forward as we know that it's also going to strengthen or you can say SAP acquired this tool mostly for the case of HANA they want to give ETL functionality to HANA so SAP BODS is always correlatively working with HANA in a project. If you don't have an ETL functional tool, definitely SAP is going to recommend you to go with SAP BODS, which is now being offered as a free tool when you go for licensing of BOBI. So as a result, what we'll have, you will have a complete solution of your data warehousing by combination of these three tools. Well, guys. I'm just highlighting those tools which has been acquired by SAP. These are the tools which has been acquired by SAP. And all blue I, blue specified uh, tools have been uh, developed by SAP. Well, the lot of development SAP has did under BOBI 4.0 XIR 4. We'll look onto it, but a little bit later. Well, guys, as I mentioned, by combining BOBA 4.0, HANA DB modeling, and SAP BODS EIM2, we are completing the flow of data warehousing uh, designing. Not only this, even it can work for several other projects. Like if, if you're not having a data warehousing project and simply you have to do the modeling, you have to maintain a database which is faster uh, and quicker in terms of query performance then you make and go for implementation of HANA DB where it process the data directly from the RAM so it is much much more faster compared to the all uh, you know uh, traditional databases where this is not a traditional database it's a in-memory database which is a combination of hardware and software guys also into the SAP landscape we have another application in the family which is more inclined on planning and consolidation. Well, that tool is named as, or that application is named as SAP BPC. This is the common name of, app, of the application which has actually been developed on top of OutlookSoft. Previously, it was known as OutlookSoft. This Outlook software was capable of delivering planning and consolidation on financial and legal data. Well, guys, as this tool is specially designed for planning and consolidation, once it has been acquired by SAP, SAP changed its name from Outlook software to SAP BPC, where SAP BPC works on top of two of the data sources, data source coming from SAP BW side and data source coming from SQL server side. 
So we have two different versions of this SAP BPC. Mostly with the current version of BPC 10, we are taking majorly my BW as a data source, where BW works on the framework which is known as NetViewer. So NetViewer is one of the prime source under BPC for working on it. Well, guys, you can see the role and importance of your BOBI under your SAP landscape. Where under SAP landscape, this is the flow of your tools, how it works. From to the OLTP system, to the planning and consolidation. We can have SAP BW as a source, and, uh, and we can do the development of report, we can do query designing, analysis, all under my BOBI 4.0. Well, this is what your landscape of SAP. And the, the, these are the association of the tools or application under my landscape. Well, guys, moving onward, we have to look into my SAP business object family. We are done with the SAP landscape now. As we are going to talk about business object family, previously we discussed about the whole SAP AG, right? Okay. Now we are going to look into business object family specifically. Why I'm categorizing the business object family? Because when SAP acquired several app tools in the year 2008, they wanted to make another group. Because previously they had all the SCM tools and they had all the data warehousing tools. They didn't have any specific ETL solution or any specific business intelligence solution. So what they wanted to do is they want to categorize a group where all analytical or business intelligence tools will be enlisted. Well, as a result, they made it a group called business object group. So under the business object group or under the business object family, we have we have three different types of solution provided for the business. Well guys, commonly BOBI 4.0 is known as business object. We call it commonly business object, Bob J only. But Bob J is one type of solution provided under the business object category. Well, it has three different type of solutions offered inside it. The first solution what we have underlying this business object is my business intelligence, which is named as SAP BOBI after following the industrial law, or you can say in the international industrial law. As per the in inter international industrial law, your product should be named as per the functionality, where this tool or this application of capable of delivering business intelligence. So they named it, SAP AG named it, uh, this uh, application as BOBI 4.0, where they didn't remove the BO, which was business objects, object of the business. So what is my object of the business? All the objects, my dimension, my measures, my detail coming from the business side. So they didn't remove BO, they added BI as a business intelligence tool for business software, where they also rename SAP BW, which we previously known as SAP BI. When SAP releases SAP NetViewer 7X, they named it SAP BI 7.0. So at that time, it was known as BI. But now it's been named as BW, by which we can understand this is a data warehousing tool. This is a data warehousing and this is a business intelligence. So this is a specific purpose tool. It gives a special type of solution. It's nothing but business intelligence. Now coming to the next solution offered inside the business object family is nothing but my business object data services. 
This is an EIM tool. Commonly, we can call it uh, like this is an enterprise management tool which offers us ETL functionality. The benefit of using SAP BE or DS in the, in, in the business side is you'll get a single environment for all your data integration and data quality in a single window. You won't have multiple tools underlying it for doing all the process which is coming across into the ETL. So this tool is going to give you the ETL solution in the business side from SAP business object family. There's another tool or application offered inside the business object family which may not be popular with this name which is given by SAP but it is popular because of another name. The name of this application is SAP BOPC which stands for Business Object Planning and Consolidation which commonly known as SAP BPC. So the common name of this BOPC is BPC where previously we call it BPC 7.5 when we released uh, SAP releases the uh, 10 the version 10 we start calling it and we start categorized it into the business object family with a new naming convention uh, uh, named as BOPC business object planning and consolidation tool so these are the three types of different solutions provided under the business object but we have to make more focus on to this BOBI side specifically as we are going to learn all about my business object business intelligence so we have to make or we have to give more emphasis on this part of the solution coming into the business side these all two of the other solutions are related to different scenario into the business side well guys this is my SAP business object family structure and the solution provided into the business object family itself okay so three different types of solution we provide under business object we have to give a more focus on BOBI 4.0 so let me guide you through the uh, solutions offered inside this business intelligence application so by looking onto the list of tools we will have a good understanding about what are the tools offered inside it and what are the solution provided by them so let me take you through on the tool side well when we start looking onto the tool side we have two different categories over here BOBI for Dato. Under this, first of all, um, this new version SAP BOBI 4.0 has been made on top of 64 bit architecture, especially the server part. When we talk about the business object, guys, SAP business object, before 4.0, we had 3.1 XIR3 version. At that time, we have a single package or single packaging of all my server tools and client tools enlisted inside the business object. So w when we go for implementation of business object, with a single implementation, we can have all list of server and client tools together. Well, guys, in this BOBI 4.0, what SAP did, they have categorized it two categories. One is a server category, another is a client category. So as a result, my server is with design with 64-bit architecture where my client has been designed still, or you can say client has not been changed, it's still in 32-bit. So as a result, SAP has to make these two things different. So they have categorized are two different uh, groups. One is a server group, another one is a client. As we have an offering of business intelligence onto the server group as well, so if we have to only do report development and analysis, we are good for uh, deploying our server version at our end or at our business end. 
when we want a designing like designing of my universes then we need to go for client based uh, implementation well guys let me take you through the list of tools then you will better understand the fact about your server and client tools the first tool offered inside the server is my management console which is an administrative platform under the business object known as CMC it's a admin console which is a web based tool at the at the server sites guys we have two set of tools one is web based another one is a desktop based so web based tool operated on the browser we know that and the benefit of using the web based tool is we can operate it from any location so there will be no constant of system location for accessing these tools CMC central management console it's a central management console which a management console for administrative work and it's a web based tool let me take you through onto the tool side guys parallelly we can see the tool as well okay so as i'm mentioning cmc it's a admin tool let me take you onto the tool front where i have mentioned it has a categorization of two slots going to all programs we're going to business intelligence uh, platform 4.0 when we get into it i can see the two of my categorization one is business object bi platform another one is business object bi platform for client tools where bi platform is my server part and bi platform for client tool is my client part where previously we go with the 3.1 we didn't have this categorization when we do the implementation of business object all server and client tools will be placed underlying a single category okay so now we have two different categories we can see all enlisted tools for server as well as client both so here we have a list of server tools where we have business object central management console this is a web based tool and it is a management console as well so i have kept all the major tools coming from business object side onto the desktop already so let me first of all open this central management console to experience it how it looks like as we know that this is a it, this is a admin console all administrative work related to management of my business object environment will be dealt over here so you can see here all the folder management all your categorization of users group user authorization event creation your license management your authentications all your setting connection setup all the administrative tasks will be dealt under this not only this we also can manage the servers running for establishing my or running my whole infrastructure of business object from this console as you can see it's been operational under the web browser where for support of running this tool we use its apache tomcat platform for all web based tools well guys this is named as central management console and it's a main management console for managing my entire business object infrastructure all all those things which is happening under bio will can be controlled by this management console under under my server part we have another tool offered for server management as of now we have discussed about like we have a tool called cmc for management uh to the whole console but now we have another tool offered inside the server part for specific task like that specific task is nothing but server manager server management and the tool name is nothing but 
CCM. We call it in common CCM, which stands for Central Configuration Manager. And this tool is a desktop based tool used for the server management. We can start we can start and we can stop our services as well as servers by using this desktop based tool. Let me take you to the tool side now once again where central configuration manager is my tool. It's a very basic tool but very powerful to manage all my server. Well guys, we have already, if you look at here, we have two of the services which is running under it. Well, there will be a categorization of services which we needed at our business side. We can have my BW Publisher services. We can have Apache Tomcat, which is essential for running our web best tool. So it should be running. We have more important part and most important thing inside the CCM is Server Intelligence Agent. We call it SI. SI is a service which holds all node of servers running for maintaining the entire infrastructure of business object. So if this service is not running, my all servers for support of business object will not run. So for looking all the services, we make and go to manage servers over here. And when we log in by authenticating ourselves by using our credentials, we can see list of virtual servers present inside it for managing my entire business object infrastructure. So this is my server management tool, which is a desktop based tool for under server part. Let me tell you the another tool offered inside the server part. When you do the implementation of your server, you'll get CCM, you'll get CCM and CMC. You are also going to get it a development platform known as BI Launchpad. This BI Launchpad was previously known as InfoView. As this Launchpad is used for accessing or doing development, not only that, it also used for, for the case of, case of, for the case of uh, power users to look into the report which is developed by the developer or for ad hoc reporting. As we have already the development platform present in the server part, we don't have to go for the client uh, installation if, you, uh, if you're not looking for. We can do the development under the BA Launchpad especially. As I have worked on or mostly in the corporate level, we are most of the time we are using BA Launchpad. But there is a slight difference uh, over uh, development over here and to the client side. We'll come to that point now. But this is also a web-based tool, guys. It is also going to be operational onto the web browser to make it more flexible into the front of like uh, uh, making it available at any place anywhere so that we can do the development we can have a report view anywhere without having a constant of system and location so this is also a web based tool and as it has been mentioned it's a bi launchpad it's a launchpad it's an application which holding up a list of application underlying it all the bi application where i would like to highlight one major application which is used under the business object especially for report development, query designing and analysis which is known as web intelligence. This is a tool which is offered inside the BI Launchpad for all my report development and it's a major tool inside the business object, the whole business object as a BI tool for all query designing, report development and analysis needs. So let me take you to the tool side now. This is how it looks like, business object, business intelligence, BI Launchpad. This BI Launchpad has been designed in two different uh, versions. One is my Java-based version. 
Another one is my dot network uh, based version. So one tool has been developed in Java. Another tool has been developed in dot net. Well, there is no functionality difference in Java and dot net. Only the difference is platform. By default, when you do the implementation of business object, you'll get the Java version. If you have to work on the .NET version, you have to do the separate installation at the time of implementation. Or even after finishing implementation separately, you can launch your uh, .NET version uh, taken from the marketplace of SAP. Well, guys, this is also a web-based tool. So it is going to be operational in web browser, any of the web browser. But we recommend to use it my Internet Explorer because sometimes uh, some things are not supported in another browsers but preferably you can choose any of the browser there's no constraint there's a few prerequisites for these uh, web based tool you must have to have your framework running the latest framework dotnet framework also you must have to have Java runtime latest Java runtime in your system so definitely those things will be placed at your server side where the deployment of your business object has been happened. So let me uh, get into it. Uh, let me show you the list of applications offered inside it. If you look at here, this launchpad holds up multiple applications, my application. As of now, by default, we'll get it Bex web application my module, my OLAP sources, my Crystal Report Enterprise, my BI workspace, my web intelligence application. These are the default applications taken after doing implementation. But we have a list of applications which we can have it over here after finishing up the implementation. Suppose like we have certain type of applications available uh, separately onto the marketplace which I can install it and I can get it under the BI Launchpad. So, <coughs> excuse me. BI Launchpad is a business intelligence application list of Launchpad where I have a major development tool known as Webby. This Webby, this Webby, which we commonly call it Webby only, the name is Web Intelligence. In short, we call it Webby always. Web Intelligence present in BI Launchpad and Web Intelligence present in Client Tool as well. So this major platform for report development or query designing and analysis is present at both the places, server as well as client. In the server part, we call it Web Intelligence. When it is present onto the client tool, onto the desktop, it is named as Webby Rich Flag. There is a huge difference between these two tools, not with the functionality wise, but with sources wise. Let me take you through here where Web Intelligence is a web based application under BI Launchpad, where the list of data sources available over here is directly coming from repository side. I just wanted to let you know, guys, this BI Launchpad is running on top of my repository of business object. So once it is running on top of repository of business object, it can only take data coming from repository side. It can take data from the local drive. Let me show you. When I go for a new document, create a new document, the list of sources will be populated here. As I can see, universe. We know that when Semantic Clear is published to the BI platform, which is nothing but my repository, then it will become Universe. So anyhow, Universe is the sources coming from the repository of business object. Also, BEX. BEX is the source coming from BW side. That means we are populating BW repository. So anyhow, this data source is also coming from repository side. Analysis view. If I have already pre-developed report, I have to only perform analysis on top of it. We will use analysis view, where only few options will be enabled. So anyhow, I can see commonly my all developed report present inside the repository only. So as a result, it is also going to access or it is also going to pick the data source from the repository. So these all three sources are actually taking sources 
from the repository. As a result, we call it VI Launchpad running on top of repository. As a result, it can only take data from the repositories only. It can take data from the local drive. Why I'm focusing on this? Because sometimes what happens if the client is small, the customer is very small, they are not managing a data in formal databases, what will happen? What will happen? Where they are managing their business data? They might be managing in Excel or they might be managing in text file if you are there, they are not having even access. <coughs> Excuse me. So let me highlight first of all the first client tool offered inside the client version, which is a 32-bit architecture. The first tool offered inside the client-based installation and implementation is Webby Rich Client, which stands for Web Intelligence Rich Client. So it's a rich client version of my web intelligence application. So this version is capable of, as it is running onto the desktop, it's a desktop version, it is capable of taking data from repository as well as it can also take data from local drive. So it's a common question asked in the interview or generally in certification of business object. That difference between web intelligence and web intelligence rich client. Guys, as I mentioned here, there is a no literal difference on a functionality side and look and feel side, but the differences are onto the sources side. We can differentiate these two tools by these two categories. One is my availability of the tool. Web intelligence is an application available on BI Launchpad, which is a web based tool. Where web intelligence rich client, Mr. Nair. Hello? Yeah, Mr. Nair. Do you have any question? No, no, I just disconnected my monitor. Uh, that's why. Okay, okay, not an issue. Just unmuted. We, uh, guys, you have an option called raise a hand. So uh, either we can discuss about the queries at the end or in between also, but preferably we'll discuss all the queries at the end and we'll see the flows of uh, like how we are going to set it up the agenda for learning business object, business intelligence for that. Well, okay. Uh, are you testing Ravi? Raise your hand or just you have a query? Okay. Thank you. Well, guys, let me go ahead with this. So, web intelligence rich client, as I'm mentioning here, the difference between this and that is like web intelligence and web intelligence rich client is first one is web intelligence application is under BI Launchpad and it's the web based tool, where rich client is a desktop based tool placed at to the client side. Okay, it's a client version tool. Where the second uh, difference between these two is, as it's a client-based tool, operated onto the desktop, it can take data even from local directory of the system where it is placed. Where web intelligence only can take data from the repositories. It's not like that. Web intelligence rich client is not able to take data from repository. It can take data from repository as well as local directory where it's been implemented or installed. Okay, so this is these are the two differences between these two applications. These are the major development environment or application we have under business object, business intelligence for that code. Okay guys, moving onward, under the client here, or uh, under the client list of tools or client implementation, we are going to have a list of tools which is offering us a solution for designing of my semantic layer. The first tool offered inside the business object, business intelligence 4.0, for designing purpose, we have is universe designing tool, which commonly we call it into this 4.0 version, UDT. And the universe developed under universe designing tool, 
will come with the extension that you and we. You might can ask why you are highlighting the extension because we have a new tool introduced inside the 4.0 for universe design where report developed inside will come with the extension WIT. Well guys, the first extension about the universe designing tool UDT is that UNV. If you develop any universe, if you design any semantic clear under universe designing tool, you will have dot UNV extension. Let me take you first of all to the web intelligence rich client side onto the tool list and then we'll look into the universe design tool, how it looks like. This is what my web intelligence rich client, this is my BI launchpad. Look at here the icons. Icons are remain same guys where in 3.1 was the same icon for CMC, same icon for CCM, same icon for InfoView which is actually been taken with the new name BI launchpad was same icon for rich client also. We have a major uh, changes happen onto the rich client side under 4.2. What SAP has did, they have enhanced the look and feel of this web intelligence web intelligence application under 4.0. What they did, the graphical uh, improvement has been happened. Also, they have categorized each and every function inside the web intelligence systematically or with categories. So those who have already worked in 3.1, we make an experience that thing that all the options present inside web intelligence application in 3.1 was not properly categorized. Well, what SAP had did, they did again development of this tool and they made it proper so that it will not be hectic or it will not be complex to use it at our end. Well guys, you can see they have categorized now the list of sources over here. All the sources you can see here. So there is no confusion at all that we may have more sources over here. As you know that the front end side it's not asking for any log until the time you're not selecting any sources. Where in 3.1, we used to prompt it uh, with the selection. Uh, um, uh, we used to prompt it with the dialog box of log on to log into the server before we proceed uh, with source selection. So here is my data sources. Can you see that? The web intelligence on BI Launchpad hold up only universe, VAX, analysis. But here I have web services, we have Excel and text. Some more sources over here, right? So few of the sources are, you know, in given under this under this web intelligence rich client tool. This client based tool has more sources, which is coming or categorized as a personal source. They all are coming from the local directory guys or they are also called as outside sources not coming from repository anyhow. So this is my look and feel of my universe. Uh, let me quickly uh, take you by selecting one of the sources. I have just selected one of the source which is nothing but the universe. I just wanted to take you uh, through this tool side how it looks like. The look and feel onto the query side is not being changed only with one modification now we have another pan onto the query panel that we have preview pan by which I can validate the data based on my query where the major uh, changes has been happened not functionality wise but the look and feel wise as I mentioned you can see here now each and every option present inside the toolbar is not scattered here and there it's been categorized, systematically arranged. And you can see, if you want to do analysis, come to the analysis tab, you will find all the analytical functions. Well, if you want to access the data, come to the data access tab. If you have to format, come to the format tab. If you have to look into the report element, go to the report element pay, uh, tab. If you have to do anything related to page setup, just go to the page setup tab. Also, the changes has been done under this web, uh, web intelligence application is 
they remove the concept of exporting and importing. They have removed the concept of exporting and importing and they made it simple. Who made it? SAP. SAP AZ has made it so simple so that people won't be confused from save, open and export and import. Previously customers are pretty confused about export and import and save and open. The property of save and open and export and import. Where now what SAP has did, they made it common name, save and open. And by that they given a functionality that we can save a data either into the local directory, onto the desktop, onto the computer, even onto the repository. You can see this is my CMS server, Ramana.6400. 6400 is the port number, default port number on my on which my central management server is running. What is my central management server? My central management server is a server on which my main repository of business object is placed. So 6400 is the default port number. So by using the save option, I can save it at any location. I either onto the desktop or onto the repository directly. So there is no export import option available here. The same thing is working with the open also. I can open the data from any location. My repository, from the local directory as well. So these are the major changes happen under my web intelligence. We'll look onto the all functionality going forward in sessions when we start our classes. Okay, so now we have categorized one designing tool, which is an old designing tool uh, inside the business object. Well, there is a complexity coming into this universe designing tool. That's why SAP has developed another tool named as information design tool. which is commonly known as IDT. This uh, IDT also used to develop or design universe. So universe design under this will come with extension UNS. This is a new extension for the universes. Well guys, why SAP has developed this tool? There is a, some lags under the U and V uh, sources. That's why SAP has developed it. We'll discuss about those lags going forward in the sessions. So we have two designing tools offered inside the client-based tool and a client part, which is a 32-bit architecture. So we have universe designing tool, we have information design tool. Universe design under universe designing tool will come with extension UNV. Information design tool will allow us to design universe, will come with extension UNX. You have to remember it. Let's take a look onto the tool side, guys, where universe design tool will come with this icon and information design tool will come with this icon. When we go into this universe design tool, it's a very basic tool used for data modeling and semantic creation underlying to the data sources coming from OLTP system or any databases. So I have I have a simple look and feel tool where we establish a connectivity and we will have a modeling platform and this is my semantic layer creating creation where I have to create my classes and objects and we have to de define my uh, different different types of objects over here. If you look at here, the structure is quite different in the business object standard. It's a classes and object which is classes is nothing but a folder where SAP has already renamed this as a folder in IDT. Well, the objects are of three different categories, as I mentioned. At the semantic layer side, we have to define it either it is a dimension, measure, or detail. Well, this needs to be defined to understand the fact that what type of uh, object we are working on it in the query. So that is what it supported under the U universe design tool. We know that when we design a semantic layer under UDT, will come with extension U and, U and V. Well, information design tool, this is a new developed tool in an Eclipse structure where this Eclipse structure will support us to design a universe by doing data modeling and semantic layer creation 
uh, in this e Eclipse structure. This is my Eclipse structure where I can see my local project, repository view, and my designing area. So the uni universe design under the information design tool will be dot .unx, would come with extension dot .unx. So that's how we differentiate the previous one and the latest one uh, designed by the universe designing tool. Well, guys, going forward, we have another tool offered inside the client part known as Query as Web Services. This is one of the tools used for giving or specifying URL for each and every query by which we can restrict a, a developer to stick with a specific query which is designed uh, like uh, previously or we can say uh, it's been already been designed the query has already been set it up the only thing you have to do is you are going to develop the report on top of this query by using the quest tool it's a very basic handy tool but very powerful which is going to give us a web services on top of my QA, which stands for query. Query as a web services. Web ser what is web services option, guys? Web services is nothing but it's a service by which we can have a URL and from there we can access the data. By using URL, you can access the data. So we will have a set of URL with all the detail like the port number, server details uh, will be there. All CUIDs will be there in this URL. And like that, we can access our universes inside the webby and inside also in third party applications if it is coming outside the BOBI for that door. Well, under the business object client part, we also have one major tool known as VZ. If you look at here, I'm going to specify into this widget which is one of the important things to place your report on your desktop so that you don't have to like being a power user being a power user we must have to have flexibility to view the report suppose like I'm not able to uh, uh, get time to look into the BI portal BI launchpad or into the email where report has been embedded. So what I can do the best, my system is running all the time, what I can do, I can place my reports onto my desktop by using this visit option. So visit option is quite good option running in this era. We have also another hot tool offer or another hot, uh, you know, you can say hot options offered inside the business object newly introduced as uh, mobile platform. This mobile platform is nothing but it's a services or it's a server where I'm going to place my reports which can be accessible by any of the mobile devices. So we have some of the open source application developed uh, onto the different different mobile applications like uh, we can access data, uh, we can access report on Android we can access uh, report on iOS, we can access on uh, Blackberry phones, also we can access in on tablets. So we are not concerned with the system. We can access uh, our report being at anywhere if we are authorized to access it. There are open source application available free for uh, accessing it, especially in Android and Blackberry. iOS, it is a paid uh, application when you download that application and if you have a mobile server established at your end you just have to deploy all your reports onto their server and then the admin will give you the URL for the server access or the credential to authorize you so by that you can get into the repository of your server or mobile devices and by that you can look into the list of reports developed by the developer. So widget. Widget is one of another tool offered inside the business object. Fine. 
So they, these are the list of client tools offered inside the business object, business intelligence 4.0. We also have one, another category, guys, which is known as specific purpose business intelligence tool, which is not been taken into the business object, business intelligence 4.0 package. That has been categorized in Crystal Group. There is another group created by Business Object where they have enlisted two BI solution or their specific BI solution as making Crystal Group. So under the Crystal Group, we have two specific type of business intelligence solution. One is Crystal Report 2011, which is a uh, it's a tool which gives us pixel clear reporting functionality. That means I can do a high level of formatting under it. The high level of formatting means I can develop any report even that structure wise it is complex to adapt it in Webby. Because in Webby we have defined format of report. Where in Crystal Report we are not having any defined format. We can customize the report as we want. That's why it's been called as pixel clear reporting tool. It's a specific purpose tool, guys. It's a specific BI tool used for the cases when we need pixel clear reporting. I can move from one pixel to another pixel for formatting my report. So it allows us to do high level of formatting in any report. That is one type of solution, BI solution offered inside uh, like outside the package of business object. This has been kept as outside package. As with the marketing strategy, SAP ha haven't taken this tool inside the package of business object. When you purchase a license of business object, business intelligence for Cordato, you are going to be have the tool, major tools offered as a server and client tools. When you want implementation of Crystal Report, you have to go with separate license which belong from Crystal Group. We have another specific purpose tool offered inside the Crystal Group known as uh, my Crystal Dashboard Designer. This Crystal Dashboard Designer previously known with the name of Excel CS. It's a designing tool for developing all my flashy reports or desktop reports, a highly interactive report. Well guys, it's not that that we are not able to develop any interactive report in web intelligence. We can do it. We can do the formatting also. We can also do the formatted report under Webby. But Webby has a quite combination of interactive report and formatted report at this platform. That's why it's popular. Well, this is a specific purpose tool. It is going to allow you to do high level of formatting where this is going to give you a highly interactive report. Well, crystal reports are not very much interactive. They are highly formatable, but they are not interactive. Well, dashboard reports are not highly formatable, but they are more interactive in nature. So when we look into the dashboard designer, it allows us to develop the flashy report, which is highly interactive in nature. So these are the two categories we have under specific BI tool offered under Crystal Group. So these are my whole about the list of tools offered inside the business object, business intelligence, 4.0, inside the package and outside the package. Well, these are the tools which we are going to learn it inside the business object curriculum. Let me take you through to the, uh, the course content. Uh, you might be able to uh, look into the course content from BISP side also. But uh, let me guide you through how we are going to proceed with uh, the curriculum especially where uh, let me show you. 
first of all, as we know that these all things are not required because we are adequate on this front, we'll just talk about these all things. And first thing we are going to discuss about the architecture of business object, how it's been designed, architecture wise, and we are going to talk about the architecture of 4.1 specially because it's a new architecture. Then we'll work on the reporting tool, web intelligence application. We'll look into all the functionality inside it, all the functionality related to query designing, related to report development, and for analysis. All those options will be discussed inside it. Then we'll jump up into the designing part, where we do modeling and semantic layer designing under universe designing tool. After finishing with the universe designing tool, we'll perform designing under information design tool and we'll learn how do we do designing and what is the benefit if we do designing under information design tool, which is a new tool introduced in 4.0 words and a business object. Also, going forward, we have to look into the Crystal Report 2011, which is a highly formatable uh, BI solution offered uh, by the SAP under Crystal Group. We are also going to look into the dashboard uh, designer tool uh, for all the solution offered inside the dashboard type of reports under my business object or under my SAP. Well, guys, we also have to uh, take a look onto the associated tool called Query as Web Services. This is one of the important tool offered inside it to make my query enable with restrictions uh, to specify a query, especially for the developer. We are not going to give the whole data source. We, we can assign a specific query to the developer. Also, there is a concept of live office by using the add-ons onto the office suite to support my dashboard. To support my dashboard to take data inside it through the web query, through the crystal report query, and through the analysis view. So live office concept will be taken up inside it when we are doing with dashboard designer tool. Also, we are going to talk about how widget works. And at last, we will talk about certain uh, administrative work onto the CMC and CCM at the front when we are talking about architecture of business object. So this is all about the curriculum of my business object for that whole, which is going to take around 40 hours of your time. Well, guys. I have a list of uh, documents which is going to be offered to your end day by day wise. Like if you can look at here, I have made SAP Business Object Document Library where all the documents are enlisted in different different categories. We have uh, Excel sources, we have notepad sources where I have given some special notes to highlight some points. I have a PDF document recommended by uh, SAP and prepared by us. Also, I have a lot of PPDs categorized for each and every, uh, you, know, you can see each and every uh, tool offered inside the business object. Also, I have a set of case studies for your hands-on practice at your home, like a homework. We follow through with the everyday classes uh, with one and a half hour every day on weekdays, where first of all, we talk about uh, the point in the presentation and then we'll jump up into the tool side and we'll see the example live inside the tool. As a result, you will understand how to perform that option. Also guys, you will have uh, the case studies which you can do it as a homework at your end to clear the concept by using or by doing the hands-on. So this is all about from my end side. If you have any question, you can go ahead and you can let me know. Yeah, Josh, you are going to have access of those documents. Uh, those documents will be shared to you through the Google, uh, Google Drive. Okay, uh, then uh, you are going to send an email with the, the, the link. Uh, not a link. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you are going to receive uh, a mail at your email ID. You must have to have a Gmail ID so that you can receive yes. those documents through the Google Drive. Okay. Okay. And uh, I would like to uh, thank you very much by the class.